And now we move to another topic, which is quite related. Um, and we learned, some, we learned something about a very cool project in Germany, the Code Week. So I'd like to announce our next speaker, uh, Gesche Joost, is Professor for Design Research at the University of the Arts in Berlin. She's well known for her research and teaching projects in the area of human-computer interaction. Gesche Joost serves as a digital champion for the EU Commission. And now, Madam, the floor is yours. Herzlich willkommen. Danke schön. Yeah, thanks a lot for inviting me and giving me the chance to speak a bit about this case, case study. And I think we are a perfect uh, tandem, uh, Mr. Makula, because this seems to be a, a case study also what you were mentioning as new ecosystems where different actors like when this quadruple helix has to have to come together. So um, I have your thoughts very much in mind when I talk about participate because it's very much about participation. So I make a, a quick one through uh, some aspects of digital education in Germany and in Europe. What we all know, the, uh, the numbers that we are um, yeah, well aware of, that 85% of the 12-year-old children are using smartphones. So, you know, it's, it's normal. We are not talking about the digital turn, but we are in the middle of the digital age, and this is normal. At the age of 10, nearly every child is online. So these are the latest numbers. Um, in last year, 2014, just 34% were on Facebook in the age between 12 and 19. 94 were using WhatsApp. So maybe Facebook is a bit uh, 2010. Maybe it's now the new uh, Instagram platform or Snapchat. So we have to uh, be on track, you know, what are the latest platforms, and we have to be very much informed of what is uh, in now, what's the, 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 the common platform that, uh, that young children and teenagers are using currently. And 87% are using their mobile every day, 75 have an own PC, 56 have an own TV. So TV is also, some of my students also mention all the time, TV is also a bit 90s, you know. You have YouTube, why do you have a TV? So this is uh, the current situation. And when we are facing this, and when we know that digital is normal, it's not exceptional or new, it is normal, it's our everyday life experience, I just wonder why, at least in Germany, the school seems to be the last analog place on Earth. So why is it this? You know, you, you, you're not allowed to use a mobile phone, you don't use a PC, you, you know, everything is, uh, is on paper. And, uh, and also teachers, I was just uh, recently chatting with a, with a young teacher, so a young teacher, you're not not an old one, a young teacher, and she was mentioning, yes, of course I do, the, I do the research on the internet, and then I do a hard copy, a paper copy, and give it uh, to, 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 the, to the classroom. And I, I was just, you know, it's like a parallel universe. Then you say, yeah, why do you do this? And when I'm talking about also digital uh, learning materials, it should be there, and I, I really don't understand why it's still a huge discussion about, you know, what's the benefit of digital learning materials and open educational research. It's, it's really like, you know, stepping into a parallel universe, and it has nothing to do with my everyday life experience and the everyday life experience, as the numbers show, of, you know, the young generation and of all of us. So I think there needs to be activity and action. So uh, we have also a, a recent survey that Germany's uh, students um, uh, and their computer and information literacy is only average. Um, of course, <laughs> it is only average when we see that the ecosystem is not working also as you were sketching out how it should be. And I think we have to really rethink uh, education and not just you know, focus on school education and not just focusing on is it analog or digital because it will blend anyway. And we should think it in a very much bigger way. So different actors have to come together. It should be more also peer-to-peer -peer learning for example, and we should learn from best 
practice examples that are there already uh, with our neighbors, for example. So uh, the UK um, is a good example, I think. Uh, in last year already, they kind of rewrote their curriculum and they have coding, um, they teach coding skills from early age on through the whole curriculum. So they just did it, they just started. And so this is a, a snapshot from uh, The Guardian. Coding a school, a parent's guide to England's new computing curriculum. And it's so funny because then the parents need the guide. You know, the, you know, the, the school children, they just do it, but the parents need to understand what's happening there. And that's, that's, that's fine. They should be included there. And what's also a good example from UK is um, a really breaking news for me from uh, BBC. It was, I think, announced also last year already that they will have a little programming device um, it's uh, handed out to all the seven-year-old uh, school children uh, for free. So they have a big kind of consortium of uh, BBC, different uh, companies um, and the government, and they have kind of little programming devices like a Raspberry Pi, Makey Makey kind of thing. They give it uh, to school children. So just, you know, have something to be able to, um, to, to develop hardware, to program hardware. They have a wonderful website where, where school children children can exchange their experience where they can uh, upload scripts and exchange their uh, recipes, let's say. So this is the kind of open system that we uh, have to have. And in Germany, we are still discussing the value of digital education. So just saying. So education in a digital society um, would at least have to have uh, these kind of action points, learn digital skills at school from very early stage on. So also in my research, we did um, like little case studies. For example, we went with my whole uh, research team to Neukölln um, in August some years ago, because in August at the university is dead anyway. So we just moved out and moved uh, to Neukölln and had a street lab. It was called street lab. And we saw like from five years old on until like 14, there were so many uh, school children in their holidays engaged with us in the street lab just to discover technology. And at some point in time, for especially for the girls, um, technology was a bit uncool, so not very, you know, popular. And uh, so therefore, I think that we have to get them very early. So at five, six years old, they were very playful, experimental. They were curious about technology and had no kind of um, anxiety or, or, or fear um, towards technology. So get them very early in a playful way, so not a kind of nerdy style coding stuff, but really playful. And I will show you some examples. Promote also data literacy and coding skills, of course. So it's not just about programming, but very much about data literacy, how to um, make a research online, for example, how to deal with my own kind of data when I'm on Facebook or on Instagram. So what's my kind of privacy, where should I be more sensitive? So this whole concept of data literacy should be very much um, a topic at schools. Foster peer-to-peer -peer learning in an open education environment. So I don't expect that all the teachers will learn uh, all digital skills that they need to teach at once. But if we start now to teach them, teach the uh, school children, it might take years until, you know, they are the new teachers at school. So therefore we have to start now with peer-to-peer -peer learning and use open education environments for this kind of exchange. And this is what we can start today. Use open source, open access, open educational resources. And this is still so much, it's, it's an old idea. You know, we talk about open access since years and years and years, but it's still not there. And I also wonder why. Open educational resources are also a wonderful tool for this peer-to-peer -peer learning environment. And collaborate with the bottom-up initiatives and international networks like we create here today. And one case study, one example is the Code Week. It's a European project and a really wonderful initiative. And I also um, like to invite you to join. It's in, in October this year. Again, you might browse with, of course, you all have your smartphone and are browsing the Code Week website now. That's good. And uh, Code Week is something that Nelly Kroos uh, was initiati initiating with the digital champions together. So the digital champions are kind of a small group. Every member state of the European Union sends a digital champion to Brussels, for example, to discuss um, open education um, systems and to initiate 
initiate the Code Week. And this is how it looks like. So Code Week is a European initiative, one week each year in October, where all different private or public initiatives offer workshops and courses to school children, to kids and teenagers, to learn how to deal with electronics, to learn a bit of coding, to deal with digital content. And uh, this was one example from last year where we were exploring digital ink to make sounds. So really cool stuff. So I like to join this workshop too. So this is the idea of um, fostering digital skills and creative programming uh, in all over Europe, but this case was in Germany in a very playful way. So also don't put technology into the problematic male corner, but it's very playful kind of um, access to technology. And release the kind of recipes or workshop formats in open educational resource, resource formats so that you can also, uh, you know, do this stuff at home, for example. And uh, based on this one, we initiated, because we said, of course, one week is nice in a year, but every week should be code week, so we kind of initiated also a kind of award uh, to have a kind of uh, prolonging the code week to make it every day. Uh, in 2013, the co first code week started, and Germany was not even part of it. And uh, at least last year we started, so from zero to 68 uh, workshops in the whole of Germany, but still, as you see, we were still kind of average. And uh, Ireland and Greece were, you know, the ones who had, were the most active players. So Greece, you know, we thought they had other problems, but, you know, they were really engaged into uh, making those kind of workshops um, with their youngsters. So wonderful initiatives. And yeah, Poland, Italy, Spain. So yeah, we should be better. The Code Week Award is something that we initiated together with uh, Samsung last year, and it will um, also uh, take place uh, next year to have those great initiatives, like you see here, to have them happen much more often, because there's such a high demand from uh, school children, from kids and teenagers, uh, having those kinds of workshop formats and engaging um, into it because the schools don't offer anything, uh, that we have to have uh, a support for the initiator. So really, uh, parents' initiatives or private initiatives, code schools, open tech schools, wonderful bottom-up initiatives that we just have to grab and make a network out of it and have a kind of peer-to-peer -peer learning uh, ecosystem. Some examples of uh, also the, um, the Code Week Award, uh, Jugendhakt is from the the Open Knowledge Foundation, a network of little labs, little living labs in the whole of Germany. Wonderful, browse the website. Uh, we made some kind of uh, jewelry programming, uh, 3D printing stuff in Bremen. And um, we did a open source hardware 3D scanner that you could uh, easily build on your own from uh, uh, Baumarkt materials. We had a, a long night of coding at an at a, um, elementary school. We had creative programming um, between electronics and uh, science, and we had a very good thing, mutant hero hacking, really cool stuff. That was with a fab lab in Berlin. You could uh, have your own kind of uh, face 3D scanned, um, 3D printed as the head of your new hero figure, figurine uh, thing, so you could create your own um, hero action figure. So the idea was try this at home, you know, have this workshop, learn about it, use open educational resource material and spread the idea, train the trainers. And therefore, as a summary, we need to participate, we need more action on the European level, learn from those case studies and examples. Uh, we have to have the common approach on a European level, as you were uh, mentioning, and have, have it put the, the, um, the building uh, blocks together. Create an open education system for all different skill levels and different ages, not just the youngsters, but until the very uh, uh, old ones, get them on board, uh, fight the digital divide, and open access to these kind of learning environments and understand digital skills as basic cultural techniques. It's not something techy and something new, but it's really basic for our being together every day. And that's uh, a picture from the workshops. This should inspire us for our discussion. Thanks a lot. <laughs>